Welcome to the last episode of Under the Book Cover for this semester, for this semester. Um, it is finals week and we want to wish everybody good luck. I know that it's a stressful time, but if you've made it this far, just keep going. Don't give up. You've got this. <laughs> the library will be closed starting December 17th and it will be opening back up on January the 4th. So I would like to introduce my guests. I have Rick Rosales and Gina Otvos with me. Um, Rick, do you wanna tell us a little bit about yourself? All right, so I just recently became a librarian. Uh, so let's, let's cue the, uh, the applause from the Yay. peanut gallery. And it took me, it took me a while. Um, I just recently got hired as a librarian last week, actually. I wanna say yesterday was officially one week. And previously for almost nine years, I was a library specialist and I pretty much have done almost everything here in the library. So um, that's pretty much it. Oh, and yeah, I'm an actor or whatever and stuff like that. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Everybody seems to bring that up about being an actor and all that and um, it's not that big of a deal, especially down here in the valley. Like, I don't know. You're Everybody always make, turns it out to a big deal. Yeah. But yeah. that's me in a nutshell. Like Gina said, you're being modest. <laughs> well, I try well, to be. That brings us up to the big question then. What uh, TV shows are y'all watching right now? So we were talking about this before we started recording, and I have so many shows. I tend to not stick to one show, and I will you know, switch between several. But the one that stands out in my mind is I just recently started watching The Crown. And my girlfriend's a huge fan. She's been watching since season one. And she's constantly watching it on her free time. And she's telling me to watch it, telling me to watch it. And never interested me because I didn't really, it sounds real bad, but I, I didn't really care about the royal family. They're over there. We got our own royal family here, our Hidalgo County judges. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry, that's a political joke. Um, and I, it just never interested me until they brought up Princess Diana. That I can relate to because I grew up knowing about her. Of course, there was that tragedy of her passing, and that was controversial. So that's what pulled me in, and they actually did a really good job. If you guys out there haven't given it a shot, because it may be England and British, and people may not relate to it, it's actually really, really, really good. Um, acting is superb. So I recommend The Crown. Well, speaking of royal families, are you guys watching Selena? Oh my God, no. So There's that viral thing going on right now where they showed Brownsville with mountains and landscape. <laughs> and like, it's like, what? So everybody in the Valley has gone on Twitter and is just sharing pictures of like Mount Everest and like, oh, here, I'm at uh, the corner of Boca Chica and... <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Expressway 83. Oh. Um, so, yeah, I don't know why they did that. They didn't do any research, I guess. Yes, I don't know. Yeah. I heard someone from Brownsville is actually on the uh, writing team. Or really? Who knows? Obviously, their voice wasn't heard. Big controversy. Yeah. The first episode. I watched uh, Lovecraft Country. That was really good. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Queen's Gambit. I want to see that one. I yes. haven't seen that one yet. And then I watched, uh, I think it's called Enola Holmes. Like Sherlock Holmes' sister, little sister. Oh. Her mom goes missing and they kind of, the brothers don't care. And like, um, she takes it on herself. And it's pretty good. That's with, what's her name? The, the, the pasty blonde chick. Uh, From ah. Stranger Things? Stranger Things, yes. What's her yeah. Name? Oh, yeah, the, the, the. 13 or 11 or number 44, yeah. whatever. Bobby, yeah. right? Bobby? There you go. Her real name. Okay, I was saying her character name. Because she's like... Yeah, it's 11. Bobby. Yeah. Bobby. I don't know her name. Bobby Boucher. Bobby Boucher. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Bobby Flay. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Like well... Young, hmm? It's kind of like a young adult show. So it's a little bit corny here and there, but... But it's good. I'll put it on my to watch list. <laughs> Along with, with the, the crown. crown. Yeah. <laughs> so, Rick, I have a couple of questions for you. Sure, go for it. How have the changes been this semester? 
Oh, my God. Uh, this is only a 20-minute podcast, right? Um, geez, there's been a ton of changes to the library. We have had to adapt because pretty much all we've done is cater to, to students, and most of it has been in person. You know, we've always been able to reach out to students through phone, through chat, email, all these different ways. Um, but a majority of the time, students come in person. They feel more comfortable speaking to a librarian or speaking to a tutor. So because of coronavirus, we've had to deal with the fact that students aren't really coming. They And that's not, not to blame them because obviously there's a pandemic going on. So it's better to stay safe, right? But at the same time, that's how we've been helping them for a majority of our time here. And so what we've had to do is we've had to try and reach out to them and say, hey, we're still here for you. They may drive by and see that the parking lot is empty or they may hear that nobody's really going to the library. And so they may think that we're closed or maybe they think because their classes are online that they can't go to campus, right? So we've really just been trying to combat that and make and tell them like, hey, first of all, we are still open. Second of all, we're being extremely safe. We've changed things up inside so you can feel safe when you come in, right? We've had to adhere to social distance guidelines. So we've moved furniture. Um, we put up glass shields on all of our desks. Um, we've had to border off or cut off the, the book collection, but only for student safety, but at the same time, Students can still check out books and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that when they do get here to the library and they see the caution tape around the bookshelves that they think, oh, I can't access any of our, any of our books, but that's completely not true. Um, what we're relying upon is students using our website to place a hold on a book and then we'll go and get it for them. So actually, if, if we think about it, we've made things a little bit easier for students to be able to get titles. Right. Whereas before, you know, they may get lost in the shelves and wandering around. Uh, now they can do specific searches on the website and they can find whatever book they're looking for and we'll go and get it for them and just have it waiting for them at the desk. A lot more students have been taking advantage of that. I've noticed in the past couple of months, we're coming down to the wire. So research reports are being written. Um, so, yeah, we've had to deal with that. And um, we really, really really, really miss the students. I think everybody here can honestly say that because it makes our day um, go by a little bit quicker, a little bit easier. It feels like we're really helping them. So we really, really, really miss them and hope that things can get better uh, ASAP, for real. In the past, um, is that how libraries kind of functioned? Like they would put in a request and the librarians would go retrieve the book like it, I think, New York Public Library and like smaller libraries. That was way back in the day, which is why books have call numbers, is because back in the day they used to bring a book title to the librarian and then a librarian would call that number to a person. <laughs> you know, like how I did the like, call, like, hey, I don't know if they used a megaphone or something. <laughs> well, this is like pre electricity time, so it's probably like one of those big, like, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and they would call back the number to someone in the back and then they would go and retrieve the book and then bring it to the front. So that's why we call them call numbers. So yeah, I guess we're kind of going back to that kind of time now, right? That is, that is interesting. So in an ideal world, what would you like to see next year? Whew. I would like to see next year students take advantage of all of our services. So that means I would really like to see students definitely come in, get their research help in person because if they're that type of learner, that's good for them. But then I'd also like to see an increase because of the fact that we've been promoting it so much. I'd like to see an increase in online instruction and online research help. Um, basically, I'd like to see an increase in everything um, and it all be completely safe right? Ideal environment would be back to where we were. And I'm hoping that the students miss us too. You know, I'm hoping that when everything does go back to normal, the students don't take us for granted and realize like, whoa, what an awesome place we have in the library. So let me visit it more often, right? That's kind of what I'm hoping for too as well. 
So if you could tell the students one thing, what would it be? Oh my God, hold in there. Hold on, we're almost through. Like seriously, um, whenever this podcast goes up, I'm pretty sure the vaccines will already probably have started uh, being shipped out to uh, parts of the country, right? And so hopefully that's a, a stepping stone to finally um, doing our best to eradicate this virus and we can go back to the way things were. And it's just a matter of students waiting just a little bit longer and everything's gonna go back to the way it was. But in the meantime, STC has re readily prepared for this and has made pretty much everything online. So God forbid things don't get better, which I highly doubt they, they won't or will. Uh, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> Total brain fart. If, if, if we do need to stay like this a little bit longer, we yeah, have to exactly. We're ready for it. So if things do happen to get worse, hey, we're already in the mix of doing a whole bunch of online stuff. We can definitely keep it going. Um, I, I really feel like students shouldn't let the fact that there's this kind of situation around stop them from coming to school. You know, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of students out there that think, oh. You know, there's this pandemic going around. I, I feel like maybe I should take a break, right, from school or for a couple of years. And, and I don't think it should, that should be the case. I think, if anything, they should. It's a really great time to come to school. Exactly. They should really come back now. Because when all this stuff is over and when jobs come back, they'll have the education to jump right into the workforce and get those jobs. That's true. Yeah. So come on back, everybody. Yes, come on back. <laughs> well, thank you, Rick. That was insightful. Cool, cool. I honestly didn't know about the call that number part. Yeah. When I heard that fact, I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Because I always wondered why they were called call numbers. It made no sense. Uh, you know, book locator code or, you know, something like that. But call <laughs> number was weird. Yeah. Now, the more you know, right? Yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> So, Gina, your turn. You're up next. How has the programming changed this semester? Ooh, hold it. Uh, well, the biggest change that I've seen is that we've moved into a virtual format. Uh, I think it's something we've been thinking about for several years, but um, never really had the time to sit down and figure it all out. But um, with the virus that kind of just pushed us into that direction and kind of forced us into it. <laughs> um, there's definitely some pros and cons, but I think right now we're in a stage of trying to figure it all out and, and not, um, so a lot of times whenever uh, we're making plans or, and something comes up, you kind of come up with a solution to put a bandaid on top and then you end up with all these band-aids by the time you get to the end and you have a program that you you don't know where the band-aids came from and so like Frankenstein's right, monster <laughs> so like right now we're just like testing and um, just trying to be intentional so that we're not trying to fit a traditional program into a virtual format we're really just trying like what makes sense in a virtual format and um how does that work for other people like meeting them where they're at instead of making them come to this weird thing that doesn't make sense so i think that's been the biggest change for me it's, a, it's a, been a lot of like experimentation and it's forced you guys to think outside of the box and try new things that you never really tried before like the transform our world series like that's something that hadn't really been done before and and used a lot of the staff here right so it, it was new for all of us um and it ended up being um a success and there was really um it, it went off with like flying colors uh and so now that we've got that in our tool belt right we can easily do that again in the future so right. great experience it was and we just finished it so it feels um uh, um uh, yeah, like a full circle moment, I guess. Um, I had the idea back in, it was like right when the virus hit our area or Texas in the middle of March. And I remember sitting in my backyard thinking, 
what am I gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye to in person events. What am I gonna do? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so hope, I mean, I'm glad it worked out and seemed to people seem to have liked it. It was a great program, and you had a lot of views and everything. Yeah, that was uh, another thing that we saw. Um, since it, people can access it from anywhere, anytime, on their own time, uh, we got views from outside the valley. We got traditionally we have um, three or four classes that come to the Rainbow Room and they sit there for their hour and then they write their paper. But um, you can reach a broader audience online, and there's. There's, a cool, there's just something cool also about attending things live virtually um, because I'm pretty sure there are students out there that are very timid and shy about going to an event in person, right? Because they don't know anybody, they're interested in the subject matter, but they're afraid of the social guidelines and stuff like that. And then with this kind of thing, people can easily join and not feel uh, embarrassed or shy and participate. They can chat, they can type, they don't have to speak, they don't have to use their voice, they can just type in a question and get their answer. Um, so yeah, I think those are some benefits of virtual events. That's definitely been a takeaway from this whole thing for myself. Um, I'm very much a timid person and um, yeah, going to in-person events is very difficult and um, intimidating, but in this new virtual, like we'll have our meet our library meetings and uh, I feel a lot more comfortable so I can relate to those students. And then when we go back to in person events, uh, those people that were a part of the virtual ones will feel more comfortable and probably will come out more too. So right. cool stuff right. all around. Yeah. I know it's great. So in an ideal programming world, what would you like to see next year? <laughs> A bunch of celebrities coming in. <laughs> yeah, Dionne Warwick is way. on fire. Yeah, Dion <laughs> Warwick is on fire lately. Um, I don't know yet. Um, uh, I would like to. Uh, we've been doing a lot of, um, you know, just trying to make it work. Free things, um, Facebook Lives. Um, I think I would like to do like kind of replicate a classroom where it's um, like a, or like a rainbow room event where it's like a specific, Rick, you attended last week, we did a webinar and it was, you know, just 25 people there who could chat with each other. Uh, we did end up streaming it to Facebook Live, but I think there's something intimate and special about being able to attend something live and that's only for you. And so I think I would like to see a little bit more of that environment. What about performance art? Do you think there should be more uh, performance art? That's something that I wish y'all would have done this year is, is cause I know you, in the years past, you have done live performance art. There was an artist that came and did yeah. some kind of uh, uh, performance where they were crushing uh, right. objects, right? And, it, and it had a message behind it. And I, and I wish we could do more of that and film it. That would right? be good. Yeah. yeah, that'd be really cool. Those are really, um, those are some of my favorite events. Yeah. And then they touch, a lot of the students would go out and you could tell that there's so much move, so much more moved than just something on the wall or. Yeah. So what about next semester? Can you give us like a little summary of what could happen next semester? Oh, ooh. Ooh. A little sneak preview. <laughs> yeah. the trailers. You got some trailers made? <laughs> In a world. <laughs> in a world <laughs> of jaguars and jungles. <laughs> um, we, next semester, we're looking to, so I guess one thing that we've seen through all this year is that we all need to, we always knew that we needed to work together and we needed to collaborate, but I think this year more than anything, um, building relationships has been really core and important um, to how we're going to survive or move forward through any of this. Um, so next semester, we decided to partner with departments across the college. Um, so this semester, we um, took a visual artist and paired them with other professionals here in the Valley and outside the Valley. And we wanted to see how does art connect with other people with 
librarians, with um, community organizers, um, musicians, and just open that conversation up and see what happens. So next semester, we're kind of doing this, a similar thing, but we're partnering with departments. So we have a math and art exhibit um, where we're looking at um, patterns and really how do those conversations connect the concept of infinity. Um, we have a couple of other, we're doing a history exhibit, um, a technology exhibit um, with the AEDT students at technology campus. And then potentially we're looking to have um, maybe Barack Obama? Huh? Barack Obama, come on. Coming. Oh, yes. <laughs> He's doing a lot of interviews lately. Sorry, I just thought that. <laughs> maybe he was coming to SDC. We can ask. Yeah, it's no harm. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, trying to connect disciplines that we don't usually see you know that direct correlation that's super cool that is cool i'm excited for it and then would you like to tell the students something me yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the child behind you <laughs> would you like to say something young lady <laughs> <laughs> I feel for the students and for everybody that, uh, you know, we made it to the end of the year. We made it to the end of the semester, so yay. Right. So we finished the year almost. I can't believe it. Um, uh, yeah, it seems like it was just March or February and it took forever and then it took a second. Yeah. I'm glad we're all still here and look for the well, thank you both. Uh, I appreciate y'all coming. It was pretty last minute. I am sorry for asking okay. you, but thank you. <laughs> um, I really appreciate it. Congratulations, Rick, on your new position. Thank you. Thank you. Um, may you flourish. And <laughs> thank you, minions. Thank you. My my rise to the top continues from here. <laughs> and Gina, thanks again for coming on. I really appreciate it. Um, well, that's all for this episode. Hopefully I'll see everybody again next semester if they let me keep doing the podcast. <laughs> but if they if let not... you out from under the book cover. <laughs> oh, see what I did there? I see it. I get it. <laughs> Why have I never thought of that? <laughs> but um, thank you. And I really appreciate it. Awesome. Bye. Bye. Bye.